I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness, if it wasn't for the cross. You have won me with your kindness. Chase me down with I was lost and where would I be if he wasn't for the cross and hallelujah thank you Jesus I was a prisoner now I'm not cause with your blood you all my Shameless, never in mercy, and now your mercy will be my soul. And oh, the glory, oh, the power of the cross. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not sweet your good here for my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. By your stripes I'm here. By your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. I'm here by your death I live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes I'm here by your death I live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes I'm here by your death I live Power of sin is overcome. It is finished. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. Sweet your blood, you hold my freedom. Hallelujah. For the cross. Today our prayer is that the cross of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us in our sins. That we would take that sacrifice and that love and that we would surrender ourselves. Our prayer today for Good Friday is Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for you and me. That we would surrender ourselves and walk in a new light with him through his death, through his burial, and come Sunday his resurrection. Let's continue singing today about the surrender of our own hearts as Callie leads us and lead me to the cross. Redemption. 
Hey Lakeside, thanks for joining us for our Good Friday service. Service that reminds us of the weight of this day, but also gives us something to look forward to of the glories of Easter morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We feel the weight and the heaviness of what this day represents. We also look forward to what is ahead. Lord, in this season that is heavy for so many of us right now, we pray that the promise of this weekend would reign true in all of our lives. That we remember what Good Friday is all about and how necessary it was for that beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Be with us as a church here at Lakeside. Lead God and direct us as individuals and as the body of Christ. Allow us to continue to meet the needs of our community and be there for one another as we remember the way that you were ultimately there for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, this is Good Friday service, and I'm excited that um, as sad a day as it was when Jesus was beaten and crucified and then buried uh, for us, um, I love the fact that we have the hope that on Sunday morning, it's coming. Three days later, he's going to rise again. But as he was on the cross, um, I believe with everything in me that he had each and every one of us on his mind. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my bones but I'll prove someday just why I say I'm of a special kind for when he was on the cross I was on his mind for he knew me yeah Good Friday. It's an ironic name for the day. If you really think about it, 
as we focus on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, is there really anything good on the surface to, to call it a Good Friday? It's a day full of ironies. I want to read to you what happened, a portion of what happened on that Friday. I'll be reading out of the book of Mark, chapter 15, starting in verse 21. This is a pastor by name Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the countryside just then. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. It says, Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha which means place of the skull. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. <clears throat> it was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries, or criminals, were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha, ah, look at you now. They yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we can see it and believe him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. On this day, everyone had questions. Everyone did. And as we look through the rest of the, the story of this, of this events of this day, the questions all started. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish, the, the, the religious leaders were looking on how they could get Jesus condemned to death. So they went to Pilate. Pilate had questions of why do you want to kill an innocent man? So Pilate sent him to Herod. Herod had questions of, uh, why is this even in my court? I don't have anything to do with this. Sending back to Pilate. Pilate again kept asking Jesus, where are you from? Why is this happening to you? Why, why, are you? why are they doing this to you if you're innocent? Then we see that the criminals on the cross, they too had questions of, if you say who you are, then take us down. Call down an army of angels to come and to take us off this cross. Those that were in the crowd mocking him, they had questions of why he didn't go ahead and save himself. Why he said the temple to be destroyed and then rebuilt in three days. The guards, they too, were mocking him. Questioning why if he said who he was, why didn't he come down? The disciples had questions. They didn't understand what was going on. They had been told. They would spent all this time with Jesus, but yet on this day, the questions they had. And we see even that Jesus himself, hanging on the cross, had questions. Where he said to his father, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you left me here all alone? No one understood what was happening on that day. But yet, time eternal 
will feel the effects of all that took place that day. Crucifixion started at 9. Said at 12 o'clock it went dark from 12 to 3. Matthew tells us that the earth shook, that the rocks split. Matthew even said that there were tombs that were opened and that the saints left their tombs and walked among the other people trying to figure out what was going on. We hear that the temple, the curtain in the temple was torn and not just torn, but it says that it was torn from top to bottom, showing that it wasn't a man that stood at the bottom and ripped it. This, this curtain was very significant because in the temple it separated the Holy of Holies, where only the high priest could go once a year to go and enter into the presence of God. But yet, when Jesus breathed his last, the curtain was torn from top to bottom, showing that there's no longer uh, separation. There's no longer only certain people that can come to God, but all of us have that opportunity. It tells us that Mary and Mary and the other ladies who'd been taking care of Jesus were watching from a distance. And we can only imagine what they were thinking. The agony, the grief, the despair, the anger, and so many more feelings that we can't even imagine. They didn't understand. They didn't know what to do. They didn't realize what was going to happen on Sunday. They didn't realize that this was not a final act. They all went home that evening with even more questions. And I can't imagine what was going through their minds. I can't imagine that any of them slept very well that night, trying to figure it out, trying to, to understand what took place. Today, Good Friday, we are here and we are remembering the crucifixion. We're remembering the cross. And even though we know what takes place on Sunday, we still have questions. Perhaps we have these questions because we don't put all of our faith in the power of the cross. Maybe we don't understand or give the cross the credit it deserves. Maybe we know the story, but we don't truly know the author of the story. So because of that, the questions remain of how could a God who loves us send all this bad stuff to us? How could a God send, how could someone send their son to die for people that are undeserving? There's so many questions that could be asked. But as we go from here today, let us prepare for Sunday. We see in, in later verses that that's exactly what the ladies were doing. They were preparing on Saturday for Sunday. Their preparation was simply to go and to visit the tomb and to take care of Jesus' dead body. But we too need to prepare for Sunday. Right now in the situation that we're in, we all have a lot of questions. We have questions on when will we ever get back to life as it was. What, does, what will life look like after the shelter in place and the state of emergencies and all of that that's going on? We all have these questions. For some, these questions and the others in your life are keeping you up. They're stressing you out. You're trying to figure out, how am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to be able to afford to do this when my job is being suffered? We all have questions. But here's the thing. We know something that Mary and the disciples and the guards and all those over there, we know something that they didn't know. We know that on Sunday the tomb will be empty. We know that we worship a Lord who will answer these questions, who has told us to fear not that he is with us. But for tonight, may we put ourselves back into the sandals of the disciples the followers of Jesus, Mary and the other ladies that were there. And let's focus on what just took place on Golgotha. Let's focus on the circumstances that led up to that. And let's think about the questions that it causes. Let's also pray for those right now that don't have any idea of what the cross means. There are a lot of people today that Good Friday is maybe a day off of work on a normal day. 
But let's pray that they understand the power of the cross. Jesus is dead. So what's so good about this Friday? God, may you truly reveal that to us this weekend. Let's pray. Father, our minds can't understand or comprehend the events that took place on how a perfect man was condemned to death, shed his blood for people that were unworthy. And so, Father, my prayer for all of us as we're here on Good Friday is that we will take some time and truly focus on the cross. On how that when Jesus was on the cross, that he was thinking of us. And he would have gone to the cross if only one of us needed him to. But God, we know that we all need the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away our sins. Father, tonight, tomorrow, may we focus on the power of the cross. And Sunday morning, may you reveal it to us, how powerful that cross is. God, we thank you that you loved your son so much, that you sent him to the cross to die for us. And Father, may we live each and every day dying to ourself so that we too can follow your will. Not what we want, God, but what you want. Father, show us the power of the cross. That's our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today.